Hey guys, this is Peter, and today I wanted to address a question that I get all the time, and that is, when are we going to see some of these 5G home internet gateway solutions drop below 100 bucks? So uh, that's a great question. You know, when we were looking at 4G LTE, we saw uh, many solutions that were under 100 bucks. So if that's where you're looking at going, well, they kind of do still exist, although they totally don't exist. So let me just get into that and say, here's one that you can get for free. It's from T-Mobile and they'll send you the Nokia gateway. I have one of these. It's great. It's free as long as you have their service. Uh, they also have the Arcadian gateway and that one's very good as well. Uh, they also have, because they're a huge company and this is a very popular offering, they have one from Sagencom as well. But they've been listening to us and they're trying to roll out their network and these things are evolving. And now there's a new one by Arcadian and it actually has external antennas. And that's what I'm going to get to because, you know, if these work in your house, they're free and you don't have to do anything to them. That's fantastic. But if you wanted to get more speed or if you wanted to uh, tailor your speed, there are options. So uh, let me just jump to that. I say the first thing that I did when I got mine was took it apart and added some antennas to it. So you can plug in external antennas. Here's a whole kit. It comes with everything you need, including the leads that you need to take them apart. And they have great documentation that shows you how to take apart each one of these, add these leads, and add some real professional antennas with a 30-foot cable. And that's a great cable. I love that thing. It's very flexible and went right up on my roof, and 30 feet is a good run. But some people need to get further away. And they're like, you know, I'm down in a basement and then there's this big container and then I need to. Well, there are other solutions out there like this. This is a modem or a gateway that is powered over Ethernet and can run 100 meters or 100 yards. Think of a football field. That's how far away you can put this thing. Now, your SIM card's going to be inside, but there is a solution for you. And this one is not just 5G, which 5G was originally NSA built on top of 4G LTE signals. This one can be 5G SA as well, which means 5G on top of 5G, giving you potentially lower latency and even some better speeds. But the cool thing about this particular solution is it allows you to craft your speed. This one has some great features in these modems where you can make it uh, pick a particular frequency and say, I want N41 or I want N77 and really dial it in and get your solution. Now, there's another one that does exactly the same thing. This one sits inside. You can replace the antennas with ones like this, of course. In fact, that's the solution that I have right now. I have this antenna and this modem hooked up right now. I've configured it with 5G SA, so that I'm really able to take advantage of some of these. Now, what, why are these prices so high? Well, this particular solution is really global. It supports so many frequencies. When we were looking at $99 4G modems, A, they, were pull, they had one antenna. They were pulling in one frequency, and we didn't really care about, well, the Ethernet connector on it because, well, it was less than 100 megabit anyway. So there were un inexpensive networking solutions tied with inexpensive radio solutions. And we were getting speeds. If you got 30 megabit, you'd be like, eh, that's all I can get. Guess what? Maybe that wasn't a really good solution. Maybe you could have gotten much better. But still, we were looking at 60 megabit, maybe 80. Now we're looking at 300 and above. So uh, we're looking at radios with four antennas, looking at differential pairs, reducing noise for you, and uh, aggregating two different bands together. This is a whole different ballgame that is never going to be $100 or less anymore. These are great solutions. Now, this product should be, if you had to pay for this, this would be a $300 modem. So would this and so would this. You can get these for free. So if you're looking for the free or the under $100, this is where you're going to look. Now, what are the differences? Someone wrote and said, all of these products can do the same thing. T-Mobile's defeaturing them, and that's just not true. I mean, I've been in electronics business. Nokia is the ODM. They have the original design, and uh, T-Mobile is OEMing it, which means they're saying, yeah, I want to pay for that design. I'm going to pay you $300 for it, and I'm going to give it away to my customers. And they'll get it back just by making you a customer of theirs. And they did that with Arcadian as well. This was afterwards. This one supports two bands of 5G. Let's see, N41, 
great band. That is uh, 2.5 gigahertz. And N71, that's more of an extended range. That's 600 megahertz. Next came out the Arcadian. It's actually a step up. Wouldn't make any difference at my house because I pull in N41. But if you couldn't get N41 at 2,500 megahertz, you may be able to get N66. N66 is in the, well, I think that's in the, let's call it 1,900 megahertz because there's you have your split on your upstream and your downstream. One's at like 17, one's at 21. So we'll call it 19. Really good band. And if you couldn't get N41, that is your saving grace because N66 is going to outperform N71 by about 3x. Uh, Sagemcom was the next one they came out with. Again, such a huge company, T-Mobile, and such a popular offering that people want more than either one of those manufacturers could produce. This Sagemcom one is pretty exciting. Look at this. N24. Mm, I'm not familiar with that one. N41, uh, that's your 2500 megahertz. N66, that's your 1900. N71, that's your 600. N77 is 3.7 gigahertz. Wow, that is going to be super fast. Which brings me to my next point. The Ethernet port on these things are now gigabit. And then when you look at some of these, like this Invisigig, this is 2.5 gigahertz on the Ethernet port. So we're talking about when this thing steps up and we're able to get two different bands of N77 going at the same time because it's 5G SA, we're gonna get speeds that push this port to its limit. My network is not gonna be fast enough for the connection that this thing is gonna be able to support. It's gonna be wild. Uh, so yeah, is this a $100 solution? No, it'll never be a $100 solution. This is a global solution, and we're not hoping to get one or two bands that may line up. This gets every band that I've ever had, and it has some amazing firmware in there. And here, I can show you the speeds that I'm getting. Here's the signal to power ratio, here's the quality levels, here's the noise ratio, and here's the two 5G bands that I'm pulling. It's giving real-time data, so the fluctuations I hear are normal. And when I run a speed test, it locks them in. I gave up some of my downstream in order to get some great upstream. If you were a worker like myself, where you're making videos, and you wanted to push things up, 100 megabit up is huge. So if you have 5G NSA, there's no way you're getting anywhere near that. You're probably getting 20 to 30 megabit up, So uh, if, if you're lucky. In fact, I was getting like 20, so this is huge. But a lot of people just care about download. I don't care if I download at 800 megabit or 400 megabit. It's really just wicked fast. But uh, um, I really want to have some upload speed. If I have 30 upload versus 300 upload, it's 10 times. So I was getting, you know, sometimes 20 megabit up, and that's all that you could get. This is going to be five times faster. So definitely worth it for me. Also, people, someone has asked me about priority. They said, sometimes I get 300 megabit and I'm happy, but other times I'll run it and I'm getting 90. And so, you know, what's happening? Well, what's happening is priority. When you're a home internet customer, uh, T-Mobile wants to sell you excess bandwidth in markets that they have excess bandwidth. That's why these things are called fixed area wireless. You're not supposed to take these around the country. When you drive your motor home down to Newport and you pop one of these things open, that, ne that network at that particular location may not be able to support it. Your speeds may be terrible. Why? Because your priority is the lowest on the network. They want to make sure that all of their phone customers are satisfied before we go and hog a whole bunch of data by pulling things down to 300 megabit. That's just the way it is. So if you have a issue with your speed and say, I work from home and I make a good living and I want better T-Mobile speed, you can get it. Call them and get a business line. That's going to up your priority. If you want more, guess what? Money will solve the issue. You could throw more money at them and say, I want to up my priority. They have a price for you. That's how capitalism works. So yes, they will be able to satisfy you. Uh, if you wanted to solve it yourself, well, guess what? This solution or this solution where you could craft your own solution like I've done and made a 5G SA solution that none of these other products can support, then you can do it. So uh, in fact, when I have my business, uh, I. Uh, modem hooked up at the same time, I can even get better scores. But let's just show you right now. What kind of scores am I getting? This is just my T-Mobile SIM in the Invisigig with the waveform antenna. 
and 27 millisecond ping and 300 300s achieved come on get me up the 400 most of the time i'll get 400 or above it's cranking me up there i saw a 390 390 that's not bad that's in the 400 range but look at my up my up is huge so this is a really good solution this is my consumer sim placed in a really nice modem and yeah if you're working from home and you need good service it is available you can do it <laughs> and i could help you i could help you get there by providing different solutions and uh different antennas now if you had a nokia like an antenna like i did for a long time this is a great modem and i use this kit to bring out the leads and hook up a professional antenna guess what i got some really good speeds but the upload just wasn't there in fact i was getting downloads sometimes at gigabit speeds but i needed the up so i'm willing to to trade it and get some good upload speeds and craft my signal and that's what this is all about if you want an inexpensive solution go straight to t-mobile and get the solutions from them these are all great gateways uh, i can't fault them each one of these would be clearly over a hundred dollars these are like 300 dollars gateways for sure in fact i think if you lose one or break it or something i think they charge you either 2.99 or 3.99 for the gateway because that's the realistic price of what these things are so are you ever going to see one for 50 bucks nope i wouldn't plug it in if i did uh but can you get something cheaper yes all of these are great the nokia i've been a fan of but the arcadian is better if you can't get n41 you can still get that what is it n66 the sagem comes even better because it's not out yet but when n77 starts to get some bandwidth uh, you know, it's already it's already available in my area, but it's not getting any bandwidth yet. There it is. N77 is going to be huge when that gets here. And that would be neat. This one is everyone's trying to get a hold of this one, thinking this one's going to solve my needs. The only thing that this did for me was it didn't negate my need for an external antenna. It just simply took those $9 worth of cables and, and well, basically plugged them in for me. Big deal. I could do that myself. I'm not going to go crazy trying to get this modem because this isn't going to solve your, all of your issues. This is still 5G based on 4G LTE technology, and it uh, has some good bands on there, some good band support. But you know what? I can get that other ways. I can get that with this. I can get that with this. The Sagemcom. Sagemcom is one cool modem. It enables me to be in control of what I'm doing. So get a business sim where you can actually bring your own right device, BYOD, plug it in, and uh, then you can kind of craft all that you need. This will allow you to set all the little uh, parameters that you need in order to get it recognize any of the SIMs, as will this one. This will allow you to change the parameters that you need for it to recognize the SIM, because these are locked to these devices. So uh, not locked, they're just programmed for these devices. So you need to be able to be able to program these devices to see that same card. There you go, guys. This is indeed cool. And uh, thank you for the questions because it always helps me out. So give this thumbs up if you learned anything. And uh, thanks so much for watching. And we'll catch you in the next one.